Are you looking to make better marketing decisions with your Google Analytics? Well, my name is Sheldon Payne, and in this video, I'm going to teach you how to filter internal traffic from your Google Analytics so you can make better marketing decisions with your Google Analytics reports. Now, before we get started, make sure that you take a moment to subscribe to this channel. And I also want you to hit that little bell up there in the corner or wherever you can to get notifications so you don't miss any future videos and tutorials. Why is it so important to remove and filter internal traffic from your Google Analytics? So as a business owner and a marketer, first, let's review the purpose of Google Analytics. We want to understand our customer. We want to know who they are, what they're doing on our website, and how they are buying from us or why they are not buying from us. We want to know um, what are the traffic patterns on our website? You know, where are our visitors coming from? What devices are they using? How long are they staying on our website? Um, you know, what pages are they visiting? We want to know how our customers are finding us. Are they coming from Google? Are they coming from social networks? Um, are they coming from other websites and website referrals? And as business owners and marketers, we want to be able to track our content and our marketing performance. So which campaigns are the most effective and which content are people most interested in? So without filtering internal traffic on our Google Analytics, um, it really doesn't allow us to do all that. So it's super important that we make sure that we add some filters to our Google Analytics account so we've got the clean data. Otherwise, what happens is that we get the internal traffic and that internal traffic are, um, you know, it's depending on the size of your company, the people who are making changes to your website, making changes to your content, uh, they're on your website because maybe you've got a customer success element and people are on your website and they're clicking through your site. All of these numbers are skewing your Google Analytics reports. Um, and what that means is that it's skewing the data that you have to make better business decisions. So let's go ahead and implement some filters that you can use to remove the internal traffic from your Google Analytics. So from our Google Analytics account, now that we're logged in, what we want to do first is we want to go to the admin. And from the admin, we're going to see our account. We're going to see the property that we want to implement the um, internal traffic filter. And then we're going to have our view. So I want to take a second before I move into applying the filter to talk about the views. If you're new to Google Analytics, what you're probably going to see in the view is you're going to have one view and that's going to be the all data view. Um, what you want to be able to do to make sure that you're, you know, filtering out the traffic and a best practice is to create a minimum of three views. So three views that we typically recommend to, to implement one you already have it and that's the unfiltered view uh, this is this view is basically all of the raw data um, and it should not be removed or modified in any way shape or form and again if you're a new to analytics uh, this is a view that you probably currently have um, the second view that you want to create or that you want to have is the main view so as you move forward this main view or marketing view um, is going to be the primary view um, and should contain contain all of your tested filters. Um, ideally, you should only see traffic that is 100% relevant to your business and marketing goals, which is the reason why we want to filter out the internal traffic. And there's other filters that you may want to implement in the future as well, such as spam, um, you know, also subdirectories, blog posts, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Those are things that you might want to create, uh, remove. So you want to make sure that you've got a main view and this is gonna be probably the cleanest piece of data that you're gonna to have to make those business decisions. The third view that you wanna implement um, is that you wanna create a test view. So if you're creating a new filter like we are today where we're gonna be implementing the 
um, internal traffic filter. Uh, first, we want to try that in the test view. Um, we want to make sure that the test view is perfect. And then once we're satisfied with making those changes in the filter's performance, uh, we can then move it from the test view over to our main view so we don't um, disturb any of that clean data and perfect data that we're all hopeful for. So now that we've chosen our test view, we want to go down to our filter. From our filter, uh, it's going to look, and as you can see, uh, currently I have no filters here. So we're going to add the, um, the internal traffic filter. So we want to add filter. And then we want to create a name. So I'm just going to call this internal traffic filter. You can name it whatever you want. Uh, from there, we're going to have our uh, predefined filter type. Google does a really good job of this. So we've got filter type. We're going to exclude. And then we're going to, for this particular video, we're going to choose the traffic from IP addresses. And then we're going to choose the expression. And that's going to be that are equal to. And then we're going to include our IP address. So if you don't know what your IP address is, there's a very quick way to get that. And that's simply just to go to Google and you type in what's my IP address. And then from there, it's going to show your IP address. So we just take that address and we copy it. We come back. We hit paste. We hit save. And there you have it. We've now implemented an, inter an internal traffic filter. And as business owners and marketers, this is going to allow you to make better business decisions moving forward. Um, I also want to note here is that when you implement a new view or when you implement a new filter, it's not retroactive. So it's only going to collect and filter out that data or make the adjustments to the data once you implement the filter. Um, so why is this important to know? Because let's say we've got someone new to the organization or you're looking at historical traffic. Uh, we want to know and make a note of when we implemented this filter or when those filters took place. So an easy way to do that is to go and to add an annotation to our Google Analytics. Very simple. We click back out and go over to our acquisition. And you can do this anywhere. I'm going to pick traffic channels. And then I'm going to do a drop down. You can you should see something like this. I'm going to do a drop down. And what you'll see is that it's going to say create annotation. So I'm going to create one. It's going to be for today or for the date that we implemented it. I'm going to put in added internal traffic filter. And we'll hit save. So it's super important that we do that. So again, if any decisions, business decisions need to be made, or we see really big changes in our Google Analytics reports and traffic, we'll see this annotation to know uh, of the date that we implemented this change and what kind of, what kind of impact uh, this may have on some of the reports that we have in some of the future marketing and business decisions that we make for account. So there you have it. That's how you remove and filter internal traffic from your Google Analytics reports to get that clean data that we all want to make better business decisions. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed the video, please do me a favor, hit the thumbs up and the like button, um, share it with others, and please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any future tutorials.